just telling my son how he's going to learn computers. Um, he's got this giant gaming computer and uh, <clears throat> told him that I'm going to sabotage it and he has to fix it. And if he fixes it, he can play it. And that reminded me, you know, you need to stay grounded with what people know and don't know. Um, you can deluge them with vocabulary but if they don't have some you know anchoring points to tie that down to it just becomes a bunch of shit so I have to give a disclaimer because there's so many aficionados now you know that like one one horse what do you call it a one horse pony what do you call those guys there's one thing they do and don't you know they're the best at it well there's three kinds of computer people there's people who have no fucking idea whatsoever. Like, if you put it in front of them and you show them pornography, they can appreciate it. But they have no concept whatsoever of what's inside the box, dude. It's truly a black box. They don't understand electricity, AC or DC. They don't understand uh, communication ports. They don't understand power. They don't understand PCBs. They don't understand assembly. They don't understand anything. It is a total and complete fucking mystery to them. Then you've got users of computers who they're fairly competent. You know, they can install drivers and they can, you know, make the computer do what they want and they use the computer a lot. And, you know, most people like 80 or 90% of people are just computer users. You know, they know how to use a computer, whether that's a computer in the palm of their hand or a laptop computer or a desktop computer, you know, desktop, laptop, palm top. And then the third category is people who make computers, right? And I don't mean buying parts on Newegg and putting them together. I'm talking about fundamentally creating devices that compu <laughs> commute, uh, compute and communicate and stuff. So I was telling my son that everything will have either one wire or two. Um, I mean, it might have three, but, but if it has one wire, it's doing its power and communication over the same wires, over the same bundle or the same cable, the same connector. Or if it has two, like a hard drive, it'll have power on one cable. Real simple, power on one cable, if it fits, it'll work. And um, communications on the other. So if there's only a few wires, it will be serial communication. Um, an example of a component that is its communication and its power over the same connector, four pin connector for a fan, you got power ground, and you've got the PWM driving the fan and you've got the RPM coming back. So you can spot a stalled fan or know your fan speed or adjust your fan speed. So really quickly, we'll go over the components in the computer. On the outside, you have an IDC cable. All of them, dude. If it doesn't have IDC, it's a piece of shit. It's generally a D-shaped connector with three pins, ground, um, and then 240 between the other pins or neutral and 120 between the, the, the other two pins. Um, that's very standard, you can get it anywhere. They're pretty much all interchangeable. They come in different gauges. This is more detail than I gave him. You just grab any old IDC cable and plug it into the wall. Um, by design and definition, there are like six basic different, you know, you really only see one or two, but there's six basic different sizes of an IDC um, inlet and you're not supposed to have a cable <clears throat> insufficient to handle the current that will plug in there. Meaning, if it's a device that requires more than 10 amps, it'll have a different shaped connector which forces you to use a heavier duty IDC cable. All right, that's the whole point of IDC. And if it's, on, if, if it's an IDC cable, it has to be good from like 90 volts to 350 volts, meaning you can take 50 or 60 hertz, 240, 250, 120, International it means it has um, an AC to DC converter in there, not a transformer. So he didn't get any of those details. What I told him is that there's an IDC cable and you plug it into the wall. That's AC. Then you have a power supply. It's nothing but a metal box with a bunch of wires coming out. It does nothing but convert AC wall power into 12 volts and 5 volts at high power. And there's, there's different power. It might be a 350 watt box. It might be a 750 watt box. Um, its job is to power the motherboard and you know the hard drive and the GPU and all the different parts. And there's, and there's basically two major connectors, um, 12 volt connectors and five volt connectors. So coming out from there, you've got your motherboard, which is the only thing that's complicated. It has one thing that plugs in, which is your microprocessor. 
Um, if you look at it, um, where the microprocessor plugs in, you're either going to have um, coolant lines or a fan right on a heat sink or even just a really big heat sink. But there's almost always a fan these days. Um, his has coolant lines running to it. It's uh, water cooled. And, it, and there's one more, well, there's two more big things that are, that are primary plugged into the motherboard. One's the GPU, the graphical processing unit. And um, that takes big power. It's kind of the only thing that draws a ton of power. Like the motherboard <laughs> needs big power, but that's like the most fundamental connector coming out of the uh, power supply. It'll be really obvious how to hook it up. Then when you run additional power to the GPU, it's also gonna be heavy gauge wire. Those are the two power consumers. Um, and I explained how um, the other little sticks that plug in are RAM. You know, the difference between random access memory, which is your, you know, your ability to fucking like hold an idea in your head and move things around. And then there's a hard drive that plugs in, which is your long-term memory. The hard drive has two connectors. One is power and one is communication. It's always serial communication. There's like eight serial communication ports in a big gaming machine. You can plug into any of them. They're all the same. You could run any cable. They're all the fucking same, dude. It's fucking, you know, you might get a little bit of difference, but nothing you would ever notice. So we use solid state hard drives. Um, it grabs power off of the power supply. Any one of those fucking connectors that'll fit, I couldn't care less because it doesn't draw much power. And uh, a communication wire over to the motherboard. Coming into the motherboard would be all your fans. Those are all the same, just a four pin connector. Um, you know, lots of times you'll have like, a, if you, like we've got two fans in the front, two fans in the back, three fans in the top, and we got a pump that acts like a fan. So for that, you might get a, an external power distribution that bumps your ground and power to run higher current. And um, the RPM and uh, PWM signals go back to the motherboard. Um, no one really does anything fancy with fans. There's really, the only thing you can know is if it's fucking hot, spin the fans at full speed. If it's not, then spin the fans at low speed so it's more quiet. But with a gaming machine, you spin everything at full fucking speed the whole fucking time, dude. You don't, you want to have it as cool as possible so when you get a huge peak draw of process and GPU, um, that it, that it doesn't, you know, spike the temperature. Our cooling system runs past the processor on the motherboard and through the GPU. And then it has a big collection tank and um, effectively there's just a pump and um, those two components and a radiator at the top and a bunch of fans blowing through that radiator. You wanna blow that out with air, air compressor every once in a while. A little bit of electronics um, safe cleaner would be nice. You know, something that um, is specifically is made for cleaning electronics that's not just air, like a wet solvent if you've got anything sticky or gooey on there. I explained to him that other than that stuff, and I explained it in fewer words, you're going to have um, USB, the universal serial bus, and I'm freezing here. On his, that's how the internet connects through um, an Android device, and um, that's how his mouse connects. The mouse might be wired, or it might be hooking up via Bluetooth or BLE with a little plug-in or directly off the Bluetooth in the computer. Not so much with towers, but yes, with um, laptops and phones. Phones have BLE, so they don't have to have a bunch of fucking connectors, just so you know. And uh, then you've got your monitor. And there's like three basic connectors for a monitor. I don't give a fuck what Apple does. I don't give a fuck what your mom's computer from 1980 does. There's like three basic connectors, dude. You have VGA, which is the oldest of old school. And it's still used to this day for um, bootstrapping, right? Like it's the most fundamental built into the fucking, like every motherboard has a built-in VGA driver, dude. Just so that you can fucking bring it up in a pinch um, to do bootstrapping of like, you know, you start off empty and all you have is like the basic firmware running at the, you know, the lowest, lowest level. And then you might have uh, around here, uh, HDMI is really popular, but that's more of like consumer goods. It's just a convenience feature. And really you want um, like digital video. You know? um, if the connector fits, it will work. You'll find like the GPU, and the motherboard have connectors for monitors. You can use the GPU, the graphical processing unit on the computer, or you can use the one on the GPU. It'll have like 
one or two digital video plugs, an HDMI plug, uh, a, a GPU will never have a, a VGA connector. It just, it would just be so fucking asinine. So that's everything that's in a computer, um, effectively, you know. And I explained to him efficiency in the way a computer works. So. If you have an incandescent light bulb and you apply 100 watts to that incandescent light bulb, maybe 30 or 40 percent, you know, it's a random number, I'm not saying this is the correct number, maybe 30 or 40 percent is converted into photons, like visible light that lights your room. The other 60 percent is converted to fucking heat and just wasted incandescent light bulbs. And then they came out with compact fluorescent, CF, right? Those are like fluorescent tubes, but in a spiral. Those are horrible. And they came out with LED and they draw orders, an order or orders of magnitude less power because their efficiency is much, much higher, like 60% or 70% or 80% or 90%. So if you give it 100 watts, you'd get 90 watts of light output. And that's why they can draw like 15 watts and match a 60 watt incandescent. You can go do the back math on that. I don't really care. Um, but the funny thing, and the thing that, and the reason I gave the disclaimer before this, the aficionados will claim that they have a way to describe, which no one really has a way to fucking describe, dude. That's, that's logical and reasonable. The efficiency of a processor is 0%. If you apply 100 watts to a processor, you are going to, it's going to result in 100 watts of heat. Meaning that if you set up a test with two cardboard boxes and one of them you put a resistive heater in and the other one you put a gaming computer in and you run them both at 100 watts, so they're drawing 100 watts on the watts up meter for 10 hours and then you measure the temperature in the boxes, you know, like you have a large thermal mass in the box, a large block of aluminum that you're trying to fucking transfer energy into, um, they'll be about the same. So you ask yourself, if you understand efficiency, how the fuck can a computer do anything if it's 0% efficient? Well, <laughs> because it's a twofer, bro. It's two for one Friday. So in a computer, you not only get a 100 watt heater or a 1000 watt heater, you also get 100 watts of potential com compute. Now that compute may just be a, a fucking spinning counter that's doing absolutely no good for anyone. Or that compute might be fucking mining Bitcoin or calculating the nth potential or fucking rendering your video game or whatever, right? It's radical, it's fucking unbelievable. And you're like, well, what does this mean to me? And, and why does my fucking Apple Watch do just as much as my fucking giant home desktop computer? Well, computers started out at like, you know, vacuum tubes and before that, like, like weights and measures and levers, like, you know, a hundred volts, like whatever potential they could produce. And then they end up being like 24 volts and they end up being like 12 volts. And then modern community computing was five volts, right? Everything was five volts. Well, power equals voltage times current. It takes a certain amount of current to change gates, right? So then as we moved out of transistors into um, MOSFETs, the currents required to change state between zero and one, that's all there is, is a state in zero and one. There's no purple state in the middle, bro. There's zero and one. So if you're trying to make purple, it is like zero, 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 one, one, zero. It's like, there's a code for that, right? It's still made up of zeros and ones. There's just two states, on and off. It's still very simple. No one has jumped that gap yet. Anyhow, in order to change that state, you need a certain amount of current. So the first big leap in, in power consumption was switching to MOSFETs with gates instead of transistors with bases. So that's a voltage um, stimulated device instead of a current stimulated device. And it astoundingly simplified and uh, allowed you to put, you know, like six orders of magnitude more shit in there. It really fucking ramped hard. Now, after that, all the fucking gains in efficiency just came from Ohm's law. It was at five volts, and then it was at 3.3 volts, and then it was at 1.2 volts, then it was at 0 0.6 volts, and it was at 0 0.2 volts. So the reason why your phone can run off a tiny little battery that's only like 10 watt hours 
for like 10 hours, so it's running for like one watt, but it's showing you this bright screen and it's communicating with cellular and it's communicating on Wi-Fi and it's communicating with your Bluetooth earpieces and it's fucking doing all this crazy calculation for you. Well, it's doing that at a very low voltage. So that it, it, with, with voltage controlled MOSFETs or whatever's, you know, aficionado, whatever's specifically in there now, such that you're doing the same 0% efficiency uh, operation, but your, your um, potential compute is fucking far greater. And, and I'm very careful to call it potential compute because it is almost impossible to keep a computer computing all the time. So the next gain came from um, variable speed, like variable clocking, right? Like the old computers, whether you're doing something or doing nothing, they were just chugging the same amount of power. This was like the old golf carts where no matter what, they drew a thousand watts. And if you wanted to go half speed, you burned half that thousand watts off on a fucking metal spring underneath the golf cart to heat, literally. That's how the speed control worked on the uh, old golf carts. The older, old ones with two speeds uh, would have three fucking paths between the batteries and the motor. One was a direct shot that was full fucking throttle. One was through a big resistor and one was through a small resistor. So you got like creeper speed, mid speed, and full speed. Didn't know that, did you? After that, we got into pulse width modulation, right? Da, 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 da. Now I can give you zero to 100% speed. That was for DC. Then we got into brushless, stepper motors, right? Where there's no brushes, where you go dot 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 and then we got into more advanced computing. Yeah, none of that has anything to do with computers. What else do you need to know? Nothing in there is really going to harm you. The AC goes into the big power box, and nothing but 12 volt and 5 volt DC comes out. It's not going to harm you. Don't stick your tongue on it. Don't stick it in your butthole. But you know, it's not going to electrocute you. It can make sparks, you know, but it's all pretty much to standard. It's all thermally protected. You know, it could shut off for a short circuit. It's, you know, pretty mellow. Yeah. So what do you want to do with all that? You know, how does that relate to a laptop? Well, take a laptop apart, which I've done many times, and you'll find that it's just all that shit crushed into a smaller spot take a cell phone apart, you'll find it's all that shit crushed into a smaller spot. It's always built as piece parts. Only someone like Apple would make something monolithic, and I don't know if they make monolithic stuff, but I could totally picture them doing that because they're fucking dicks. <laughs> I'm only mad at Apple because I can go and write an app and distribute that on my fucking Android phone, and you can't do that on Apple. They have to be like, I don't think that's really an appropriate app to distribute. It's not in compliance with our rules. Would you like to become an affiliate member? Maybe your little brother can work at our store. Wouldn't that be glamorous? Come to our factory called Foxconn and see how we make your stuff see why we have trillions and trillions of dollars. See why we pay our directors $20 million. See why we're rich. Basically, my two big problems with Apple is that they use slave labor and then they mark it up grotesquely and they have a closed ecosystem. And I'm more mad about the closed ecosystem than the slave labor. Okay, It's not technically slave labor. I get it, dude. Just like Bodhi in fucking out in Nevada is, wasn't slave labor, right? Like when you got out there to the mining camp and you spent all your money to get there because you were fooled by a bunch of hucksters and you had no money and no whiskey and no pussy. Pussy is what they called it back then. That's the word, that's the vocabulary used so you can say it. Well, you went and you did your hard day's work in the mine and then you got like these local tokens which were only good there that weren't actual cash dollars or gold or silver. And you traded your tokens for whiskey and pussy, as they called it. You can go watch Deadwood and learn about it. Pussy, whiskey, and of course a place to sleep, and some beans, and every once in a while a bath. Well, you got caught in a trap that was perfectly tuned to give you only enough to keep you satisfied. They found if they paid you too little, that you would get restless. You would get blue balls. You would want to drink and party. You would start thieving and fighting. If they paid you too much, 
you would save up and leave with that knowledge to another camp, right? Because there's, there's a lot of intellectual property around mining. And so you don't want someone studying under you for five years and then going to the other camp and then, you know, it's a big competition. So they figured out the perfect amount of pain and pleasure to feed these sad men and women who were trapped out in the middle of fucking nowhere to uh, to find a happy medium. And that's what happens at a place like Foxconn. It's nothing nice. Anyhow, the reason I got off on modularity is because you can predict exactly how anything will work in a computer based on the, the, the fundamental modular pieces. They'll always be basically, I mean, all right, so this isn't a universal truth, but they'll always be a motherboard. The chip for that will almost always be a separate device. The cooling for that will almost always be a separate device. That means you can upgrade or change any of that. Um, the motherboard will have things like the USB, um, but you could use an external one. The motherboard will never have the hard drive. Um, it might have, it, it will actually, it will never have the memory. Whoa, buddy, you wanna die, I can tell. So you, you can always upgrade and change your memory for larger memory, faster memory, more efficient memory. You can add or subtract how much memory you have. You can always add one or two or three hard drives. Um, you can always change out your monitor. So there's all these systems interfaces. And you'll follow this into laptops, but laptops have to break the rules to make it fit. Now, it appears monolithic in a laptop, but when you really start taking it apart, you realize it's not. Um, it's more uh, likely that the chip won't be swappable, that the chip will be part of the, of the um, motherboard assembly, um, but the cooling for that is still a third-party part. Like, the motherboard is common with a chip, and then depending on the shape of the laptop, that controls the cooling. And what they do is they take a large clod of copper, and they stick it on the ass of the chip, and they run it over to, um, the, they sweat on a little piece of heat sink, and they blow a fan that sucks into the side and blows out to the side, and some amount of that air blows over the computer in such a way that the dust is most likely captured and um, you get clean airflow. Uh, you'll find the speakers will be modular, you'll find the Wi-Fi will be modular, you'll find um, the screen will be hardwired. I mean, just take apart a laptop, you'll see how it works. Then when you get to a phone, um, you'll find this like even more integration where the microphone and speakers will probably be modular. Um, the antenna will probably be modular. Almost everything else is on there. Um, you break things up for testing and for, um, like you're always racing and you're not in sync, right? And so there's like a year or two of validation on a lot of this stuff. And if you don't have modularity, then you can't test, you know, exactly as it's gonna be. Like the Bose microphone people might be three months behind schedule, but you're on time, so you gotta start testing. So everything clicks together with connectors. They have these really cool little surface mount connectors that just clip together instead of cell phones that I'm very interested in. Um, they seem to be quite fucking reliable, and uh, oh boy, they're tiny, dude. They're fucking teeny tiny. I've been thinking about making some stuff with those. It's like the ultimate Arduino shield. So computer chips now are so small that um, you can lose one under your fingernail. And they draw so low power that you could power one off of just the environment. Now it's not going to go and, you know, run your gaming fucking machine, right? It doesn't have any displays, it doesn't have any inputs. Well, it has inputs and outputs, it's still a transfer function, but very low power. I mean, you could you could insert a microchip under someone's skin and they wouldn't know it. So, yesterday I finished my goal. The lizard finished the goal, not me. Um, finally got the testing I wanted done. Left it at a perfect spot where um, it's operating at an, a, a, an acceptable level but there's actually one big improvement I know I could make that would that could possibly give like a 50% gain in performance, meaning like, let's say it stops in a foot, I can make it stop in six inches, but um, we don't wanna do that yet. You wanna build margin. 
So that's put to the side, I'm on to the next task. Um, I ordered a head, so everything I need for the next task is there. Um, it's all fired up, it's all ready to go. I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna install some components, and I'm gonna start working the API. <laughs> <laughs> it's Cover Your Ass Friday. That's CYA Friday. CYA Friday has been celebrated since time immemor immemorable. Time immemorable. In immemorable. That's probably right. I have a big vocabulary of words that I've read, but I read them wrong, so and I've never said them. So when I say them, sometimes they came out they come out funny. I'm better at it now, but it's part of why I'm talking. Um, I have like, my brain processes things funny. And so sometimes I'm reading Garble, but it makes perfect sense to me. But then I start speaking it and Garble comes out and people look at me and they're like, bro, you're doing it again. And I'm like, I'm like, really go my Because I didn't fucking fill my brain up the way you filled your brain up, right? Like I didn't believe anything they were telling us in the earlier grades in school. Like first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th grade, I didn't believe them. I thought they were fucking shifty liars like all the other people. So I was very careful, you know, what if that shit I put in my brain, I put different shit in my brain. Where I finally loaded an operating system in my brain, well, that was after uh, technical college. Um, the first school I trusted was DeVry, what was then DeVry Institute of Technology, um, which is now DeVry University. They're ABET certified, it's legit. It's expensive, it's private. Um, but anything that's badass <laughs> is expensive and private, right? Like, it's the fucking opposite of state school. So, when I went there, the first time I failed out, you know, when I went there, that was for an associate degree. And when I went there the second time, I graduated at the top of my class, and it's because I trusted my professors. The first time, there was an, he's gotta be dead by now, there was an old military guy from the Air Force named Professor Derby. He saw what was wrong with me and tried to fucking build trust with me. He planted seeds, and um, I got my fundamentals, you know, like my Ohm's Law, shit like that. He showed me that no one could fool me, that like it wasn't a trick, and that what I did with my pencil worked out with the multimeter and the oscilloscope and you know the RPN calculator that it was fucking true and it would never change on me. And then if I did my math right, that my fucking results would come out plus or minus back then it was 10%. This is DC and AC, you know, the basics. So I did that for a while, maybe a year, and I fell out and went and cleaned the toilets and shit. And when I went back, I had a huge advantage over my fellow students, right? I'd already taken all of the digit, I'd already taken and passed like all of the digital classes, all of the DC um, analysis classes, all of the AC analysis. Like I got, where I'd fallen off before is I got soft in some of the AC analysis when it started to get all abstract and far out. Um, but I ended up doing really well. And I did all of my homework and I did all of the extra credit and I never fucking asked for help, dude. I just fucking sat there at the gas station solving the problems, whether it took me one hour or 10 hours. So it wasn't fair because other people had kids, other people had to go to work, whatever. I had nothing to do but to, to, to finish my task. And so I sat down sometimes and where other students spent an hour and gave up and maybe went and asked the, the professor or a teacher's aide or didn't complete the task, I completed the task every time. And sometimes it took me 10 hours. The longest one ever took me was 19 hours for one fucking problem. That was a different school in a different place. That was Stanford grad school. Uh, proofs and logic and proofs or something like that. One of those, you know, proofs classes. Um, So once you learn to trust science, you know, like one thing at DeVry is they didn't teach chemistry. They covered physics, but they didn't really cover chemistry. So later on, I learned chemistry in my garage, dude. You've heard this story before, right? Oh my fucking God. One of the three sources of information on the internet at least 10 years ago, 15 years ago, that you can get into where someone will help you. 
One is making drugs. Two is making explosives. And three, I think it was like recycling and metallurgy and shit like that. So, um, yeah, I had a wild lab set up, dude. And I was making all kinds of stuff and I learned about all of my fucking basics. I mean, I'm still missing fundamentals like that I'm self-learned in. So I'm missing fundamental things that like formally educated people just fucking have an intuitive sense for. But like functionally in a lab, it's like, yeah, dude, I know how to do vacuum distillation. Like I know about three pass. Like I know how to, to maintain and, and, and keep my chemicals and, and lab gear. Like, yeah, I've got, you know, stirring hot plates and fucking, you know, and, and big um, fractional distillation rigs. And yeah, I could make any alcohol or any drug you wanted. It's not fucking complicated. You just need about $10,000 in equipment and then you can do anything. Of course, you need precursor materials. If you can't buy them, you can make them. You always can. It always comes from the fundamentals. And it always eventually comes from the earth or from a process. Here's the thing to know. Everything either comes from the earth or from a process. And so that means ultimately it came from the fucking earth and it was processed. Now, maybe it was processed with electron microscopes and fucking thermonuclear heaters and it's not practical for you to do that. But usually it's just a big bunch of fucking stirs and rollers and settling ponds and shit like that. You got to understand this, right? Like inert backfilled rooms. Like if you're not thinking about rooms backfilled with, with dry nitrogen and like, you know, working in a vacuum and, you know, um, extreme, you know like desiccation machines. If you're not thinking about that kind of stuff, then you're not thinking about um, the process it took to make the precursors you need to do whatever the fuck nefarious tasks you want to do. I suggest you just skip all that and buy what you need from China. <laughs> so. Dad never taught me how to do anything useful. We went fishing a couple times crashed his motorcycle once or twice, but like, I never learned how to ride a dirt bike. I had to teach myself all of that. I taught myself how to ride an electric bike, an electric dirt bike. And then I went out with another dude, same dude who, who turned me on to chemistry. I learned how to ride a dirt bike. I can ride a dirt bike, not very well, but uh, the first thing you gotta do is get over the fear of the whoop de doo and realize you've got like 20 inches of suspension. You, you can do the most impossible things in a dirt bike. Taught myself how to go off-roading and four-wheeling, you know, with my own rigs, breaking my own rigs and shit. Taught myself all my own wrenching. I actually learned a lot from uh, the old one, uh, Larry Widmer, uh, at the Endine Forums. Um, I went through all my original trials and tribulations there of tearing down engines and shit like that. Before that, I'd worked on small engines and Briggs and Stratton's and, you know, like installing stereos and never done anything serious. But I know this machine right here, fundamentally. I have fixed more things in a car than you'll ever fucking be able to ever fucking extract from me, dude. Thousands and thousands and thousands of things. And from this, I learned about ingress, IP, ingress protection, right? IP ratings, IP68, dust proof, waterproof. I learned about thermal cycling and temperature ranges. You know, like 60 degrees C, don't run any hotter than that. 100 degrees C, you're in trouble. Accelerated aging, minus 20 degrees C. Uh-oh, shit's not working right. Self-heating. Lots of things will condense over and get wet when it gets really cold, so you have to keep them on all the time. If you let them turn off, you need to dry them out before you turn them on. It's real simple. I learned about UV degradation and what it means to get plastics or paints that very quickly, um, like a car is the most amazing thing in the world, dude. You very rarely see cars that are discolored, not to the degree, like you gotta understand, it takes like 20 years to discolor a Honda. You can go get some plastics molded and they will discolor on the ride home, okay? UV protection is huge. Shock and vibration, dude, if you've ever built anything and just rattled apart, you have respect for how amazing a car is, dude. Loctite and torque 
How about corrosion, electrolysis, dissimilar metals? How about electrical noise? Dude, everything you'd ever want to know is in a car. And now with an EV, you can get into high voltage. Leakage currents. Leakage current detection. I learned how to program an assembly language. And C. Java and LabVIEW and Arduino, a lot of Arduino, an MIT App Inventor, and Android Studio and Visual Studio. So, moving on com to computers, you have a different class. Of it's called a microcontroller. Some people call it a microcomputer. You should, you should call it a microcontroller because it attracts a different sort of software. You want to microcontrol. You don't want to microcompute. To microcompute is to fantasize that you can run Python on a Raspberry Pi effectively. Yes, you can. It's stupid. I fucking despise it, dude. Ugh. To microcompute is what you want to do to make a state machine which is deterministic and predictable. So if you're doing something like firing rockets, it would never, ever, ever run Python on a Raspberry Pi for that. I would micro-compute that. But I want mine to work, so... Boating? If I had to say I learned from someone, and there's always been a mentor, right? I would say I learned from my Uncle Carl. He's the one who took the time to take me out and run in a cast, and take me out and fucking like bend the prop, and take me out and fucking and, and, and lose the anchor, take me out and have the anchor fucking drag, take me out, have the boat disappear. And my mom took me out a bunch before that, like out in the ocean in a rental boat. And I went out with my grandpa as a kid, and I, you know, used to rent rowboats and pedal boats as a kid. Like, I did all kinds of boating, but there's a difference between going boating with someone else's boat and fucking being responsible for a boat. Be that a rowboat, a tin boat with a fucking, with a stern mount, you know, with a little fucking, what the fuck do you call a motor? An outboard, um, or, you know, an inboard outboard. So I'm into inboard outboards right now. This is a big boat with uh, the engine on the inside in an engine room and the, um, the stern drive on the outside. It's called the inboard outboard, is what I call it. Prop, not um, no jets or anything like that. Impellers. Now look at this machine, it's a Lexus, all outfitted with a bunch of uh, data collection. Looks like we'll be on TV soon. There's a truck full of crushed cars. It's amazing to me anyone would crush a car. It's just so valuable. A quick reminder that you can buy a car for $300, but if you wanted to build that same car from scratch at a local fabricator, it would start at a million dollars. So you can get a million dollar effort for $300. And this is the magic that happens at a place like Tesla. If I wanted to build a Tesla from scratch, yeah minus the aesthetics, um, <laughs> I could probably beat their price. How much should an EV cost? It should cost the same as a good Camry. Not a Corolla, but a Camry. So Toyota is the standard of cars, if you didn't know this. You know, I'm a Honda guy, but I have a lot of respect for Toyota. Um, Toyota sets the standard. They set the standard with the Prius. You will respect Toyota. Um, I had a Tercel. Above that is a um, Corolla. Above that is a Camry. Then you can start getting into Lexus. Um, but what's a, a Camry cost? <clears throat> well, anywhere between like what? 30 and 50,000, somewhere in there. $35,000 was our target. And just because inflation's going up so fucking fast that $35,000 is now $42,000 doesn't mean the fucking target has changed. We're not earning any more money, dumb fucks. In case nobody's noticing, we feel it first on the fucking, on this end of the spectrum. Dude, costs have like doubled and wages have gone up by like 5%, okay? 
okay? You guys are out of your fucking minds. I don't know how anybody's operating on $20 an hour. You certainly can't fucking raise a family properly on $20 an hour. Like, I gotta pay guys $50 an hour. Like, I won't pay anyone, even a man from Mexico standing out in front of Home Depot, less than $30 an hour. That's what I pay. When I pull up, I figure out which one is Jefe, and I pay $30 an hour to every man there, whenever I can, <laughs> which I don't have enough money. So it's the trickle down economics is not working because I'm fucking broke. My net worth is between two, $3,000, and it changes every payday for about 24 hours, then I'm broke again. So that's the truth. I don't owe any state taxes anymore. I don't owe any federal taxes anymore. So, there you go. 